treasury stock at cost method. All right, so the initial issued price of a stock does not affect subsequent uh, treasury stock transactions. Uh, no gain or loss recognized when treasury shares are reissued. So just get familiar with the journal entries, right? So purchasing back treasury stock when we buy it back, well, basically think about it. It's like we're buying any other stock. We debit an asset. I know it's not an asset, but you know, it's a reduction to capital, really. It's a reduction from equity. Um, but this could be in place of the investment in Apple stock, right? We debit that. We credit cash because what are we doing? We're actually paying cash for it. Reissuing the treasury stock for cash. Well, we are going to debit cash because we received cash for it. And we're going to credit treasury stock and purchase cost. And this is at the cost method because we don't deal with par value, right? This is the more simple one. We're not dealing, if it's par value method, we're going to see APIC and par value and all that. Example cost method right here. And I believe, yeah, when we look at the solution, it tells us what we did. So we have the journal entries here. We have the actions taken here. So I'm just going to, transaction activity for Harrison Company. I'm just going to go here. Well, what do we deal with here? Well, issued, par, $100, 1,000 shares at $110. Well, how much money did we receive? We received cash of $110,000. We are going to credit common stock for $100,000 because that is at the par value. What did we actually receive in cash? And like we said, APIC is that internal gain tracking system. It's that internal gain. We're keeping track of that. Now, a note on APIC, this is kind of a fun fact as well. You know, the fun fact, when I say that, I mean, you could be asked it as a one-off multiple choice question, or it could actually apply, and we will see it apply here. You can't have negative APIC. So if you ever are going to take losses on your own treasury stock, it's a reduction from retained earnings, which we will see down here. So APIC, it can, you know, it can go up, it can go to zero, but it can't be negative. We reacquire our stock, looks like at a little bit uh, more money, right? So we bought back treasury stock and we only recognize APIC just like we only recognize gains when we sell. When we buy back, we're not recognizing gains because we're buying things back. Just like when you sell stocks or you just you know, do anything, there's no gains on buying, there's gains on selling, losses. All right, 10 shares reissued at $112. Well, this is the uh, same thing here, except it's only 10 shares. So. What cash do we receive? It's 10 times 112 treasury stock. This is what is going to be the corresponding credit. 10 shares reissued at 130. We're going back and forth here and there, right? Just keeping track of these gains. You're seeing the same journal entry over and over, which is super helpful, right? And we are reissuing it from treasury stock. Here we used common stock because this is us just creating it. We're issuing it, right? But this is reissuing it. So we're going to deal with treasury stock. That's the difference. APIC, so, and then when we get to a reduction in APIC, which we'll see, you got to look back and, and keep track of the difference, right? We got, all right, you know, how much APIC? Uh, we're keeping track of that. Well, 10 shares reissued at $98. Looks like we've got a reduction to APIC now because why is that? We're now at a lower amount than we originally issued at. So we're lower than par value. We are now taking a quote unquote loss. So then last thing on 10 one reissued 10 shares at $105. The cost is 112. We got to tell you the cost there. Um, this is a point where losses from treasury stock transactions are deducted from APIC. Once APIC reaches zero, it cannot be negative. At this point, you reduce retained earnings. So this is where we start to do that, right? If you go back and keep track uh, of what we have in APIC, well, we cannot go negative here. That would not be good for us. So this is our combination of journal entries that we'll see you know, as we practice this and go through the, these different um, you know, equity method processes. Par value method, instead of being recorded at cost, treasury stock is recorded at par when bought or reissued. Any losses between par value and the reissue price of treasury stock is taken first when paid in capital, then it's taken from retained earnings. Retiring treasury stock, repurchasing stock as treasury stock does not mean it's being uh, retired, removed from existence. When it's retired, stock transitions to authorized, unissued stock. So authorized stock, it, it never really matters for the purposes of the exam. Authorized just means it exists. We really care when it's issued. And you know, when it's issued, it could be sitting in your vaults as treasury stock, or it can be outstanding. So that's a big differentiator there.